Hey guys, it's Paul, and I've been uh, having a lot of conversations online recently, getting a lot of questions about these Maloof-style benches that I made a couple years ago, and I wanted to put together a video to just kind of explain the process that I used, provide some tips, uh, some of the tools that I used, and some of the techniques and so forth. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll share the templates uh, that I have put together for these. Uh, they're just two-dimensional templates that are kind of crude. I tried to draw it in 3D in SketchUp, and I wasn't able to, so I was able to build it but not draw it. Um, just because of the compound curves, it was kind of difficult for me to draw. But I've got the two-dimensional templates that I used, um, and I just wanted to kind of step you through some of the um, aspects of the design aspects of the project. Again, this is based on the Maloof original design, um, and the uh, main differences between mine and the original, uh, the original uses uh, turned legs. Uh, these are just square cut to taper, uh, and then I rounded over the corners. So um, not quite the, the same look. I didn't have a lathe at the time. Um, I do have one now, and I, if I do build another one, I may consider doing the actual turned legs. Uh, and then Maloof also did a through tenon uh, coming off of the turned leg, protruding through beautifully through the upper rail. I chose to use a uh, floating tenon joint and not a through tenon. Um, so the, um, the bench is essentially a mid-century modern design. Um, I think that the, um, the key characteristics are just the flowing joints, the sculpted joints where the rails meet the legs uh, and within the curvature of the, uh, where the rails, uh, the side rails meet the front and back rails as well. It's just all very fluid sculpted joints. Uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so the, the, and I also the, the woven top, I just love that uh, and was able to come up with something that looked pretty similar to the, the Maloof original design. I'll show you how I attach that and weave that uh, in the course of the project as well. So my process was first to cut everything to its kind of rectangular rough dimensions uh, on, on the table saw. Uh, and then to, uh, I, I made a set of templates based on the designs uh, that I was able to abstract from some pictures online and some dimensions and so forth that I was able to find online. Um, so I, uh, after cutting them to square, I drew the, the I drew the pattern onto the pieces. I uh, then did all of the mortise work. I used a uh, a domino joiner to do loose tenon joinery throughout this piece, and it worked great. Uh, this was one of the first projects that I did after buying the domino, and it was just such a great tool to have in the arsenal for this project. It was almost worth the price of the domino just for this project. Um, and so then I used, a, uh, used the template to draw out and, and drill all the holes. Uh, these are based on 5 8 inch spacing uh, and consistent throughout on the front and rear as well as the sides. Um, so with, then with all of the holes drilled, uh, I did an assembly of the upper frame um, where essentially glued clamp that, let that all set up, uh, then flipped that over on the bench and attached the... Uh, the legs and the lower rails uh, as as the next assembly step. So two stage assembly. Assembly went fine. It was a not a, a panicky assembly by any stretch. Um, it's a uh, you know again only twelve pieces throughout uh, th twelve components throughout the entire piece. Um, so then once it was all assembled uh, came the fun part and that was the sculpting step. So I used a series of three different rasps starting with a this being the coarsest of the rasps and worked through uh, in sequence, coarse, medium, and fine, uh, sculpting each one of the joints. So the key there was really to start several inches away from the actual joint and gradually blend this together, not making sure to not get in any ruts. Um, so the motion was kind of twofold, uh, side to side, as well as up and down in one motion so that you're sweeping through and gradually shaping that joint rather than a sawing motion where you're going to quickly develop a track. And that did start to happen a couple times, and I was able to just finesse and you know, feather that out and work my way through it. That took some uh, elbow grease. Um, that's how I did all of the uh, joints on the first bench. And I think I used that exclusively on the second bench. But on the second build, I had a couple friends over, and we all made benches. And when my, one of the friends showed up on day two, he brought a die grinder with a bunch of bits. Uh, and that made much quicker work of the sculpting process. So uh, he, did the, he did his sculpting in a fraction of the time. And the results were the same. It all looked great. Um, so if I was going to do another one, I would definitely use 
uh, a die grinder to, uh, to feather all those joints and sculpt all the joints. That made, uh, that made very short work of the process. Um, once you have the, the grinding or the, um, <clears throat> uh, or the rasp work complete, then I used this cloth-backed sandpaper in a couple different grits. And this, these strips work great to just get in and work that aggressively, again, in that same kind of sculpting motion. Uh, so that helped me out quite a bit. Uh, from there, then, finished sanding. Uh, probably spent more time sanding on this project than anything else. Um, finished sanding, getting everything um, you know, ready for finish. Then I used a, a wipe-on poly. Now, there is an official Sam Maloof finish, which is a blend of a couple different oils. It's nice stuff. Um, I just don't feel that it's very durable. In fact, the, the Maloof original chair that I sat in was in bad need of being refinished or refreshed. Um, a polyurethane, uh, I used it in the same fashion that Maloof describes, wipe on, wipe off. I put about 10 coats of that on. It doesn't build up very much because you're wiping most of it off, but it does get you a nice luster. Uh, and my hope is that it'll be a more durable finish uh, than the Maloof original. Uh, and then finally, on the lacing, um, this is something I, I put a lot of thought into. And really, I changed my approach from version 1 to version 2. And I like what I came up with on version 2 uh, better. Uh, and that is basically underneath. Uh, I expanded the size of the hole for the end of each row. So I used a, uh, I think that's a three-quarter inch recess, uh, drilled it down about three-eighths of an inch deep uh, to expand the size of that. And that is basically to conceal at the beginning of the row the knot that I made on the leather strap. And then at the end of the row, the brass pin that I tapped into the hole to lock that into position. Uh, and as I was weaving this through, um, I started on uh, one end and I did the, I believe that I did the, the side to side row first uh, and stretching it uh, the whole way as I went, the leather strap, pre-stretching it the whole length of it, stretching it out good. And I did break it in a couple spots and you'll see that there is an extra pin uh, in the middle. And so you come across a break, uh, just expand another hole, tap in a pin, tie off a knot on the other end, and it, it, it's like it never happened in terms of looking at it from the top. So it's no problem. But I wanted to find those weak spots and snap it proactively rather than having that happen when I sat in it. I could also pull these pins out if I wanted to and restretch it if it ever came to that. But so far, no need to restretch it. They're holding up fine. And, uh, and I, don't, I doubt that I'll ever have to, to, to restretch them. I pulled them pretty tight. I pre-stretched and then pulled them pretty tight uh, as I installed it. So they seem to be holding up fine. So that's, that's kind of a walkthrough of the tools and techniques. Uh, I will source all of these products in the, um, in the notes. Uh, anything that you might want to use, the leather strapping, for example. I can, I'll give you the exact part that I used for that. Um, and then... Uh, at the end here, I'll, I'll put up my, my diagrams, and you can do a screen grab and scale those up and use those as your own templates if you'd like. Uh, let me know if you have questions. Shoot them in the comments. Uh, please subscribe to the Toolmetrics channel. Uh, we're putting together a lot more videos uh, moving forward here, and love to have you along for the ride. And uh, uh, again, uh, thanks for watching.